NFL kickoff schedule. NFL kickoff. Yeah. Steelers kickoff. Steelers yeah. kickoff Friday night in Tampa, Florida at Raymond James Stadium, mm-hmm. home of their most recent championship triumph. <laughs> and they're facing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. And I just got here in time. <laughs> I'm, trying to sound, I'm trying to look and sound casual. Like I didn't yeah. just go yeah. from Latrobe, right? Trying to lower your heart rate. What were you trying to be? TJ Watt with like a, a, a 42 beats per minute? Is that what you're trying to do right now? You heard my beats per minute when I called you driving off the campus. Uh-huh. <laughs> you sound like my big Rottweiler when it's hot outside. That's what you sounded like. I yeah. called Moan with some fun stuff to share from camp, and you we're going to do some of that today. You and you know? you know what will also happen today too, DK? What is that, Moan? Man, I, I, I have a better bell ring today. No, you don't have this one. I, I know, and I feel like I'm letting them down, DK, when it's, when it's, when it's a dud like that, man. All right, let's go. You and it's on me this time. Uh, go ahead. If it's bad, we send it back. All right, go ahead. Oh. That was good. That was solid, wasn't it? Yeah, that's why the intro popped. It just, the intro was like, oh, yep, there we Man, go. Man, that was solid as hell, dog. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Moan, the Steelers had a full practice Yeah, uh, today uh, out at St. Vincent College. Uh, there was pads. There was hitting. There was you know just a regular old practice. A mm-hmm. uh, couple of things of note out there. Dan Moore Jr. continues to be the first team left tackle, not religiously, but yeah. mostly mm-hmm. he's the first choice. Kenny Pickett had a pass batted down at the line of scrimmage by Quan Alexander, who made a really nice read and took a little bit of a gamble by leaving somebody behind him who could have been six points and he didn't care. He went for the football and he got it. Really? And I'm going to throw in a third thing here that'll surprise absolutely nobody. George Pickens made a play. I told you about it on the phone. He made a play. He did. It's is he DK going to be a human highlight rip? Because I, I I have tried separately from you. Uh, I think the first day you were gone, DK, I was just like, hey, we we gotta calm down a little bit. Do we just say screw it and roll with it, DK? Like George is gonna be, as the kids like to say, okay, him. I you know, he's gonna be him, but not necessarily in the way everybody's expecting. Okay. And okay. I'm going to repeat for everybody what I told you on the phone when I when I was leaving there. The type of great catches that he makes yeah. don't get easily categorized. Like, you used to be able to say, this is the guy who, you know, he, he breaks, like Mike Wallace breaks a deep yeah. downfield river. Heinz Ward will fight you off. He'll do it. There was a certain type of great catch. Yeah. That would be made. Martavis Bryant even kind of fell into that. He did. Okay. This dude, guys, he's doing everything. Okay. Yeah. This catch. Can I can I do this for you? Please go ahead. Show us, right. man. So uh, I mentioned Quan Alexander getting the tip on Kenny, right? Yep. All right. So after that, it's Patrick Peterson on on uh George. on Pickens. Yeah, on yep. George. And George is heading over to the right side. I happen to be standing on the right side. Okay, so this is like this is perfect, right? I get my my clear angle on this. Kenny drops back, and I go, two words in my head: no way. There's oh. nothing here. There's no, do not throw this ball, Kenny. There is nothing to be had here. Okay, <laughs> yeah. look elsewhere. Yeah. All right. So George is out there, and Pat Pete is on him. Now, Pat Pete doesn't necessarily do a great job of turning around and look to the ball, whatever, but Pat Pete, I mean, I, I'm on him. Yeah. Okay. And he's up like this, okay, in his face. And George is falling backward. So the whole thing looks broken. Yeah. And as the ball is coming in, Pat Pete's arm is here. And because I'm that close, I could hear the football. <laughs> like this off of Pat Pete's arm. So it changes direction. Oh, he, he catches it falling down. Wow. Wow. 
he catches it falling down. Wow. What category? Where do you, what, what do you, where do you file that one, Moan? Jeez, DK. Yeah. The, the only the only thing that comes to me, DK, is this. He has a high concentration for finishing the play. He has a high concentration of finishing the play. The play is never dead to a guy like him. And again, the more and more we speak about him is the the more we realize this, I feel like, is he was right when he said, just throw me the ball up. Now, I'm going to be a pessimist for a minute. You don't want to live a life like that either. It's just like burning both ends of the, of the candle, right? We can pick and choose those moments, okay? If he say throw the ball up, we can't throw the ball up at every minute because what teams will start to do is start to play the, the tip-up drill when the ball is around George Pickens. You know what I'm saying? Like tipping the ball up because he don't deserves the opportunity or somebody would be around to catch the ball falling to the ground. I'm with you, Rick. Roll with it, right? I'm with you on that. But that's a lot. Like he has a high concentration for getting the ball, DK. That's what you have to say. Like you can't say it alien-like like Martavis. You can't say he's taking the top off the defense because I hadn't heard you one time say this or even saw it. Say he is blowing people away down the field. That I, hasn't that hasn't been. Let's put it this way: that hasn't been the focal point. That hasn't God. been when you see the catches that he's made. Yeah. He hasn't gotten much separation. Okay, and if, okay. if there's going to be people who will knock him for that, mm-hmm. and I've already seen some of that in the in the more advanced football analytics. You know where you'll be like, yeah, but he's this and that, and he's you know he can't. Who cares? What did you just say, Moan? What does he focus on? The ball, the end result. See ball, get ball. Find a way to catch the damn ball. You you know who I, who who just came to me as his comparable. And when I say this, you going I think you're gonna agree with me more than not. One, he's his own person. I don't even want to say who he is. Okay, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, that's interesting. D hop is known as what a big catch radius. Some will say he's not a guy that runs the best route or is the fastest. Larry Fitz was no different, but the high catch radius. Larry Fitz and Deandre have a lot of, uh, have a lot of, I'm, I I see where you're going. You see it. I I don't want to take it too far. No, uh, no, 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 no. But if we're trying to characterize, characterize this, right. You said, okay, not Mike Wallace, like not Martavis, like not, okay. Randy Moss, like, so what is his attribute? Right. Oh, there we go. Cosmo. No, (laughs) he's not tapping his head. Randy's different. Jerry Rice is different. This, keep them, keep them on their own no, plane. Okay. No, no, let's let's go that route, DK. Right, but like, he's not Odell Beckham, where it's over the top and anything like that. It's, I think, okay, you, you're right, Larry Fitzgerald. Give me DeAndre Hopkins, like because D Hop has always been one of those guys, man. Just throw the ball up. What did Kyler Murray say a couple few years back? Screw it, D Hop down there somewhere. That's kind of what we're looking at. But that's what this play was that I described for you. This was a 0%. You know, they also have advanced analytics for this in football, too, which is what percentage was that catch going to be possible? What was the percentage that that throw in that situation with that coverage was going to result in a catch? This was a zero, okay? (laughs) This should not even have been thrown. Yeah. But two things happened. Yeah. <laughs> One, Kenny trusted him. Kenny just said, listen, this is where the play is supposed to go. Yeah. I want you to go catch it. Yeah. You figure it out, George. Okay. I did my job. I threw the ball. Yeah. You do the rest. Yeah. Yeah. But but that also is uh, fascinating too, DK, because what it does do is this. Whatever the coaches are saying in the meetings or not, it also lends itself more trust. When players start to trust guys a little bit more, it's like when you make a risky play or you decide, you know what, screw that play as a quarterback, I'm going to run my own play, they loosen the leash up a little bit more too, you know? So that's kind of where we are when we're talking about what uh, George Pickens is doing. He said it in the offseason, just give me the ball. I want the ball more. And he's actually delivering on it right now in camp. Now, one – one thing that I'm going to do today is I'm going to I'm going to bring up some stuff that I didn't like, which is not not normally a yeah. a thing in camp. We're going to do that after our break, at which point we will also be engaging in the only segment 
that matters. Yay, yay. That is Hamon DK. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all new state of the art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. You guys know we have 764 members? Hey, that's clutch. I didn't know we topped 700. That's clutch. Well, we're 236 away from a thou wow. Yeah, and here's how you can abandon oh. the uncle's table. <laughs> <laughs> I love join that. our 764 members at the real party dkps.net slash join remember remember when we get to a thousand we get merch we can, even i get merch so speaketh the boss over here Jeez. by the way i gotta call her out real quick too just saw a beautiful moment i see with my boys and their mom too i saw your son go behind the scene and hug and kiss my i was like look at dolly being a softy out here man she's a softy all right especially when it comes to the kids Uh, our our kids are actually softies too my son had to come in here and mind the store a little bit okay uh because she had somewhere to be with my daughter and i was out in latrobe rushing back to moan (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> rush it back to me that may leverage be my life says time. pick it to pickens get used to hearing that you know what yeah i don't have a problem with it let's see uh what we can get in terms of the hey moan stuff here brian jonker says hey moan and he doesn't notice with the custom emoji because he's a member how much time does darnell washington need with the jugs machine to become an elite red zone snagger all of them all the time in the world, okay? Catching it frontwards in his face, catching him in his chest, turning sideways left and right like he's taking mug shots out here, okay? Rep after rep after rep. I don't care if he's running with the twos or threes. He need that action rep too. Scout team is going to be huge for him during the season because that's where he's actually going to get live reps, y'all. And this will be a gradual process for Darnell Washington, right, DK? Because we're going to get to something that you brought to me that we need to be willing to talk about potentially CA3, I guess, maybe. I will um, be talking about him. That that what has to happen in year one is perfect one, maybe two things. The one thing that Darnell Washington has to focus in on uh, is his blocking, DK. Yes. Yes, and, and he has been. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, actually, I got some footage of him today doing yeah. terrible things to these dummies and sleds. Uh, Osgood says, uh, hey, Moan and DK, I know we may not take much stock in preseason, but based on what you've seen in camp, what do you expect, Ramon, and I'll answer this after you, that Steelers fans watching Friday night will be most surprised to see? Uh, I hope this. And we don't know because coaches don't game plan these games. They have their sets of plays that they're right. going to run. So that's what I'm going to tell you this. And I also say govern on saying win and loss. Okay? It really don't matter, essentially. It does because you want to always put a good product out there. But if we lose by seven points, fine. What I expect to see is this, hopefully a little bit more passing from Kenny if he gets the opportunity to throw. Uh, I want to see the run game be efficient. I want to see, expect uh, somewhat of a run stoppage defensively. After that, those three things, (laughs) Kendrick Green, that fullback, is not what I want on my bingo card, okay? Uh, But those three things is what I want. Kenny slinging it, the run game being established, and young guys stopping the run defensively. No one wants to hear negatives in the preseason. No one wants to hear negatives in training camp. No one wants to hear negatives until the games start, and then they're begging for negatives because they're feeling that way, right? Mm-hmm. However, I, I I don't operate like Pollyanna, a positive spin guy, okay? Yeah. I have a feeling that what you're going to see Friday night that's going to disappoint you as opposed to surprising you is Calvin Austin the third if he has a ball thrown his way. He has not had a good camp. Mm-hmm. Okay, and today on seven shots, he was in the back of the end zone, to his credit, found his way wide open. And Mitch Trubisky, who, by the way, has had a very nice camp himself. No one wants to hear about Mitch anymore. But Mitch has had a very nice camp, consummate professional, okay? Yeah. Mitch reached back, fires a bullet. Should have been the easiest six of CA3's life. And on his way out of bounds, out of the back of the end zone, he bobbles it. And 
different people are making. You know how that goes, Mo. Every, you, you guys are all yeah. making different yeah. symbols. Okay. Guess who was standing there playing referee under I'm the guess, field goal post? I'm guessing somebody very important. I'm guessing it was the most important individual out there. And guess who called it a non-touchdown? Uh, Mike, it, referee Mike Tomlin. Yeah, And man. Tomlin looks right back at CA3 and does this mm, mm, mm. in front of everybody. Mm, okay? mm, That's mm. not good. That's not no. good. I know he is. he's a tremendous kid. And I, I know there are people who are feeling, you know, super high on him because they've never seen him play football, and he's got to be better than Gunnar Olszewski. Right. By the way, having a really good camp and was Gunner so is for praise. Gunner is. Yeah. Uh that's that's so that's, that's 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 my thing here. Levi comes in with a five dollar contribution. That's appreciated. Hey, Mona DK, you both have said this is not the year for. Pittsburgh. A Super Bowl. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. It's not Pitt. It's not Pitt. Pitt is a Ooh, who is Pitt? What colors are they? Blue and gold. <laughs> Blue and gold. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is a college. That Pittsburgh is one of your little quirks, too. I hate it. I know. No, but not from Levi because he came into the contribution. He says, <laughs> I'm always an optimist. I think this is our year. How do the Steelers get it done? Uh, Levi, I'm very much an optimist. DK, elaborate. I am, wouldn't you say? Very you much are, an optimist. You, you mean you live that way? Yes. I live that way. Yes, I feel that way too. I see this year as a year for for this team, Levi, to to get the playoffs. To to if we can get out of the first round, that's what I see. I think the inexperience of this team, a little bit aging at a couple of positions, kind of hold you back just a little bit. We still got to figure out the secondary, Levi. I'm not trying to throw a blanket on your parade, wet blanket on your parade, but getting the secondary together at corner specifically uh, and figuring out what this offensive line is going to be. That's why I'm hesitant to say exactly what it is. Let's give it a few weeks before we say full Super Bowl. I want the Super Bowl too, but let's, and I'm an optimist. Let's, let's pull it just a smidge. Everybody's coming up with excuses for CA3 because he's young and we love him and we've oh, never seen him that. play. But that's just how that goes. That's uh, that thing I talk about all the time, that hope thing. Okay? Yeah. Everybody is the greatest player you've ever seen until you see them. Yeah. Uh, Swan is trying to come up with an excuse. Respectfully, Swan, does CA3 still have injury nerves? I don't know what an injury nerve is. It's not co- stopping you from catching a football that's put right between yeah. your numbers. Yeah. And I've seen it several times in this camp, and it's not okay. Remember that his position is wide receiver. Wide receiver. Yep. They're not going to be handing the ball to him in the backfield. You might see jet sweeps and stuff, but right. Uh, this is this has not been uh, a a good camp for him. Uh, Robert says, uh, DK, at least it'll be warm in Florida if you forget your <laughs> shoes. It's warm here, Robert. Every day that I'm in Florida is a day that I could be in Pittsburgh. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, me my and God. Florida do not get along. I got Let's one that's very got fascinating because you you mentioned one guy and didn't mention the other, DK. This is a Go good ahead. friggin' question. Oh. Brian Junker goes, hey, Mo, what can a third string quarterback do to make his team better? That is a real fair question. Should he throw a lot of to lot to D Washington, let him become a starter, become a better catcher? That is a part of it too. I'll be honest with you. Uh, the flow of what the scout team is. Uh, Can you explain that? That that that's the thing that really. I mean, your third string quarterback. The best thing he can do to prepare you for a game is that, isn't it? And and that's the thing about him is to prepare the defense specifically, and that's going to be split with the number two guy too because he needs reps to get ready for the game. The I don't think many coaches think further than the second quarterback uh, throughout the week specifically and never on game day because you don't really dress the third quarterback unless there's an issue like that surrounding them. Uh, but what, it, what can they do to make the team better? Scout team operation of the offense for the defense specifically uh being somebody that's in kenny year in a good way you play honestly more of a uh coo right dk Mm -hmm. chief operating officer when you're the the second guy i mean when you're the third guy Mm -hmm. yeah essentially what you do in that point some teams don't carry three pittsburgh always have yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be the big thing for Mason Rudolph, who, by the way, had himself a nice day today. See what I'm saying? Uh, as, as well, I mean, you know, when you have three NFL quarterbacks, and whatever you want to say about Mason Rudolph, he's an NFL quarterback. I know. Uh, Sticky B says, "Hey, Moan, any chance that that Butler beats out a guy like Gunnar Olszewski, Hakeem Butler? Of course. Yeah. Uh, seems like the hype train left the station without Hakeem on it. Again, I, he's he's doing fine." 
it's hard to report on everybody. It's yeah, that's yeah. And, and remember too, I'm there. There's like I don't know, 12, 15 other reporters there. Yeah. We don't all see the same thing the same way. No. Somebody no. else will say, what's DK talking about? Eh, Calvin Austin's had a tremendous camp. I mean, you just, and, and you, you're just going to have to put together a bunch of different things here, but hype train is the wrong term if you're referring yeah. to reporters or we're not in the business of hyping. No, and it'll have to be something unique. If Garner's having a camp that DK Sandy's having so far, as far as it being Kenny very says. solid. Kenny, Kenny says. Kenny singled him out. And you know what? Listen to what Kenny's saying because who controls the keys to the franchise right now, DK? Guy with the seams in his fingers. Kenny Pickett. If he's grown affectionately to uh, Gunnar Olszewski, Hakeem need to do something dynamic somewhere else or make his valuable, y'all, too. Y'all got to remember this. There are 31 other teams that's looking at Hakeem, too, if he doesn't make this one. Well, Hakeem knows that. There and we go. I can't say this enough. You just look at this guy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you cut someone who looks like that and plays wide receiver. Hakeem has made some plays. He's yes. done He's done well enough. And by the way, him versus Gunner is a non-thing. They play different positions yeah. for all intents and purposes. Gunner's a return guy and everything else here. So Gunner's main competition is going to be Calvin Austin III. Yes, and yes. Gunner's beating him. Okay, Gunner's beating – no, I'm not – that's not a prediction. I'm I, I, saying that as we're speaking right now, Gunner's beating him out. Yeah. Now, Kenny doesn't get to pick who the return guy is. Danny Danny Smith does. And they okay. both can make it. Then there's also that. But you got to make plays, and you definitely have to make plays that are thrown yeah. right at you. Yeah. Uh, coming from Mexico, hey, Moan, why do the Steelers never conduct joint practices anymore is the operative term, and what do you think about them? Steeler and Max, hear me out. It's because we are animals. Do you hear me? We are <laughs> savages. We are chaotic as heck the way we do camp. We tackle to the ground in 907. We will hit you hard. We run a very, hear me out when I say very, I got one more for him, DK, very physical camp. Nobody does back on backers like that. Not the way we do it. Mm -mm. Nobody does not O-line, D-line the way we do it. I'm not even bragging on us and making it seem like we're better than everybody else, DK. We don't run camp like everybody else, and I think coaches know that. And also, it's one of them positions where coaches also know that if the Steelers get you, it kind of can kill your team's morale. It just – the Bills joint practice that we had, somebody had to bend the knee. And it wasn't Pittsburgh in the second practice. Uh, Ryan Lytle says, uh, hey, DK, is Tanner Morgan outperforming Rudolph in camp, or is this just more non-DKPS trash being speed? I have no idea where you would see something like that. <laughs> these, are not, I... these are not people who are in the same realm. Jeez. I mean, I, I, I get everybody. You know, Mason isn't exactly about to run for mayor here, but Thomas Gorman comes in yeah. as a new member. That's appreciated. If you would like to join Thomas, and now also Aaron. Look at that. Aaron comes in, too. Aaron, big A. You can do that at dkps.net slash join. And I am reminded, Moan, that uh, there are mm -hmm. three. Is it three? Yeah, yeah. It's three of them. Well, no, Let's those trust. That. At the get-go cafe and market, yeah. quality is at the core of every menu item. Three expert chefs confirmed. Yeah. Fine-tune every detail so that every sub-burger, salad, wrap, drink, and app is crafted with, for what they refer to uniquely as craveability. Order your favorite entry at the get-go cafe and market today. Better believe it. I'm going to throw in another thing about the get-go cafe and market. They have really upped their perks program which is what they used to really be known for that was it was just like the place that you got gas and perks yeah uh their perks program is now something else entirely yeah yeah hey that, that's beautiful man when you get gas and a good snack too dk i i just saw somebody's comment say mo no we want you to brag on our sealers <laughs> so <think> about that. <laughs> i just need y'all to know it it is Camp can be hell for, for Pittsburgh Steelers. Like, but your condition that way, and that's the only thing we know, too. So that's why we don't do joint practices. Mark Lancaster says, hey, Moan, do you think we're going to get a good look at Herbig at Edge this weekend, referring, of course, to Nick Herbig? Yes, 100%. Uh, I'd expect him to get the line share. It wouldn't shock me if he went uh, middle of first quarter to start of the second half. 
That's what I expect for a young guy like him. You got to remember, we only got three games. So those young dudes need a whole lot of reps, DK. Yes. Rick says, hey, Moan, who needs to show the most to get slash stay on Mike Tomlin's radar in this first game? That's an interesting way of looking at it. Is there somebody that the – maybe needs to go above and beyond. Did you ever feel like that when you were playing? That it wasn't just going to be two. okay for some guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for me in year two specifically. Let's hear uh, it. I, I felt like year two was the year the Marquise came in. We had the whole conversation. Craig Urban and I were in between. Tony Hills, Doug Ligurski. Uh, Tony was a tackle, moved the guard. Uh, Craig was in the fold, and I felt you like – You had a pack. There was we a, had a pack of guys, was, was, and somebody needed to – Yes, yep. yes. Trey Essex, I think, was there. Chris Kim, like it was, a, it was a log jam is what it was. Mm -hmm. And that second year, I remember, like, I'm going all out. I'm about to go hit people after the play if I have to. I got to go harder than everybody else. Like, there was a fight to live in that year. So, yes, you do have to do those things. Somebody on this year's roster that has to do that, I would say Keanu Ben early. Early in camp, definitely have to do that. Uh, just a bunch of names, DK, that's kind of got lost a little bit. Trey Norwood and let's go Miles Kilbrew. Like, there's a lot that has to happen. Like, these names have to be afresh and in front of our eyes a little bit, too, if we're talking about just who has to do something, man. Um, those are the positions I can specifically think of. And also, we hadn't talked about them enough. Kevin Dotson, hustling, I, I, like, there has to be something that has to be done there, too, DK. So there's a few guys that got a spark a little bit this weekend. Danny says, hey, Moan, can Kendrick Green be used in third or fourth and short? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. As? As a fullback. Okay, meaning Kendrick not Green. carrying the ball. Uh, it'd be a lot to ask of him unless Coach really feels it's necessary to do those things. Yeah, I mean, they've been handing the ball off to him. They didn't today, incidentally, in handoff drills. Uh, yeah. it was he, he was working, you know, kind of where he belongs, down at mm -hmm. the other end of the field with the offensive lineman lining up as a second-team center. So the idea, by the way, that, that Kendrick Green is about to just, you know, become the sole occupant of the, yeah. of the, of the abandoned fullback room is, is not going to happen. Uh, yeah, and I would say this too. Check, I have to double check Baltimore situation. They're moving their former fullback slash D tackle Richard Ricard to okay. guard because if you have an extra offensive lineman or you have a specific player on your roster on game day, you basically get an extra player to be exempt. Baltimore is exercising that right right now, and maybe that's what Pittsburgh plan is to do with Kendrick Green. There is a loophole right now that'll get you an extra player on game day. I'll get the specific specifics at some point. Irv says, hey, Moan, the same old go and comeback routes with jet sweeps are being called, but there are no complaints from fans because plays are being made. Did Matt Canada save his job? Did I miss the part where the season started? Oh, uh, no. No? Irving, we're just going to have to Irv, do it. I man, think, these are camp drills. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see more. I think he knows there has to be more also when it comes down to Matt Canada and how he's going to operate this offense. Uh, I hope it's uh, good for everybody's sake, including his, man. And I'm not projecting anything. I'm just saying exactly what it is. Luke says, hey, Moan, did you ever see a player get hit so hard that their mouth guard and soul left their body? Heck, yeah. I mean, goodness gracious. Let's think back to James Harrison. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, the specifically rule changes happened in those defenses. We saw a lot of stuff happen during that time. And, boy, uh, but specifically – Vinny hit me that hard one time, <laughs> Vince Williams, that is. But nobody just off in general. We did more of that to others than they did to us. And, of course, you can always say A.B. from Perfect. That's always there. Jacob says, hey, Moan, less serious question, but who's one player from Steelers history that you would bring back to play on this team? I'm taking Shazier or Palomalu. Oh, this is easy. It's almost cheating. Joe Green. <laughs> That's too easy. But there's an, they already have edge rushers, though. Uh, no, 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 no. We, we, no, he's interior. Yeah, yeah, he's interior. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm a little, little concerned about that spot right there, DK. But definitely, uh, Joe Green is the easiest answer to that whatsoever. I'm going to take the sappy one. I, I, I just w I would want to see Shea playing. Oh, <laughs> I don't even care sense. what the circumstances are. That makes sense, man. You know? Yeah. That's just, just, just man. 
you know, he's yeah. working right next door over here. So we get to, we get to see each other and talk a lot now. Yeah. Uh, Robbie Jones says, Hey Moan, is it true that they don't have a cut down day now? All the cuts are made on one day. That's very true. Uh, that can be good for teams, but it's also bad for the guys that get cut because you're in the rest of the pool with everybody else trying to find a job, Robbie. Like this. You just become one of the billions of goldfish yeah. sw swimming by. You know, I think it used to go from 90 to uh, 75 and then 75 to 65 or something, I think, too. And then that to 53. Yeah. Thomas Gorman says, are you kidding me? Was it really that easy to join? What membership yeah. was easier than watching the Steelers in the fifties with my dad as I lay on the floor propped up on my elbows. Actually, Thomas, I'm not sure that's the parallel you'd want. The Steelers in the fifties were kind of tough to watch from yeah. what I've read. Yeah, no, uh, uh, and then my, look, you'll get a penny back. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> you get a penny back on See, top of that. Moan got the dollar. Moan's got the penny machine there in Hendersonville, I, Tennessee. I swear, I got some change <laughs> in his office somewhere right here. Mullet change. There you change go. cup right there. Mike says 452 watching and 198 likes. We Shameful. can do better. This is actually true. Shameful. This is true. Bob Schreiner predicting that Kevin Dawson will be at Whataburger. See, that's his second time with the joke because he said earlier my shirt looked like I work at Whataburger. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take just a, right we're gonna take just a couple more today. Boston Walker says, "Hey Moan, I was at Friday Night Lights when I tell you that the block Kendrick Green laid on the defender." Was kaboom loud? Ooh, That's really? the best thing about camp, though, isn't it, Moan? It you guys is. hear this stuff all the time. Fans yeah. never hear it. TV doesn't pick it up. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, that's what we do in practice. And you know what? That was just giving a hand clap because that was expected, right? That that's what's so crazy about it. Is it's expected to be that way in Latrobe. Doug says, "Hey, Moan, how does an NFL player balance marriage slash kids or even dating during the season?" Um, I'll say this, man, and I've actually seen it more and more. NFL wives and professional athlete wives, they have an understanding of what it is. They understand when dad or, you know, for we, female sports, mom, like, has the job to do. And everybody just kind of plays the role, man. I'm uber appreciative of, of how my wife handled it uh, because you're gone all the time. You inherit another family easy, and mm -hmm. it just has to be an understanding. And when you have those days off, Make them about the family is what you have to do. Tuesdays is the off day for the most part. Do that. Our last question for the day comes from Brian, who says, Hey, Mo, now that Anthony McFarland is being more consistent, can we start seeing explosive long touchdown runs like Willie Parker used to? I don't know. By the way, like Anthony McFarland used to when he was at Maryland. Remember, this is a dude yeah. who once ran up 200 plus yards on Ohio State when nobody was supposed to be able to do that to Ohio State. The answer is yes. It also comes down to where Anthony McFarlane is going to get the ball too. Sometimes the expectation for getting the ball on a, a, a first and 10 when you're losing is way different. Like if the team is chopped away at the team, like for him to get limited runs because he's behind Jalen, he's behind Najee, y'all. Most time players like him get those big runs, they have to chip away at it. And, and to share with everybody, Anthony McFarland has not been getting like little quick passes out of the yeah. backfield. He's going downfield. He's even lined up as wide receiver. Yeah. So is he going to still have that same momentum to find that open grass? I don't right. know. Or have a feel for the way the guys are blocking. You know, there's a lot that goes into big, big runs. No, that's good, good stuff. All right, guys, we have to take off for the day, and we will have another one of these shows tomorrow before my flight to Tampa. And then game day. getting close, I know, right? Game day. Getting close. All right, guys. Hey, y'all be good, man. Don't mm -hmm. don't don't take any wooden nickels. Just uh, have ninety nine cents, and you can join us. I was gonna say, just make sure you don't take any of Moan's pennies over there. <laughs> I know the change drawer. Peace. No, for real, he has to go. I do have to go. That's <laughs> all. Yeah, I got stuff I got to do with my kids. Family comes first. Yeah. He has to go. See you, everybody, tomorrow. Bye. Peace.